<laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to introduce our QNMD, Qualified National Marketing Director, Andy Kennedy. And after 25 years in Colorado, Andy's recently relocated to Northeast Tennessee to co-found an intentional community that Sham Shambhala. <laughs> okay, thank you. Collective centered around high vibration living in the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. Andy's been a student of energy and energy healing since her certification for crystal healing in 2003 from the Melody School of Energy Medicine which she furthered with additional certifications in Reiki through three, one through three, quantum touch, prana healing, guided meditation, spiritual response technique, and what kind of channeling? Gal gal say it. That's good. That does say galactic channeling. Okay, galactic channeling. We won't open that can of worms today. Okay. But since an early age, she has been connected to the inner knowing and in a way, working with these energies through the great spirit energy that moves through all of us. Andy stepped away from one-on-one -on -one healing in 2017 to teach and has four courses on manifestation, which I want to take, Awakening the Intuitive, Doing Your Dharma and Crystal Healing, as well as two mini courses on affirmations and toxic truths, living a clean life. Andy calls herself a high vibration coach and incorporates these teachings into her Juice Plus team and uses the power of Juice Plus for helping her clients raising their vibration on a cellular level. Love that. In 2014, Andy joined the Juice Plus community and will celebrate her 10th anniversary on August 10th. Perfect. And she reached QNMD in December at 2021. And I want to say Andy is just the ultimate team player. And she and her lovely husband, Craig Kennedy, are an inspiration for many of us and have impacted their world and our world. So we are so fortunate this morning to have Andy speak to us. And I'm going to have you take it away, Andy. Mm, thank you for that. And uh, thank you everyone for being here on this beautiful solstice. We're still in this solstice energy. The longest day was technically yesterday, but we have three days sort of before and after that we're in this energy and it's also a full moon. So it's really, really good energy right now. And I'm just happy to be, to be leading this. Um, and I do have a screen to share. So let me pull that up really quick. And um, while we're just here at this screen, I would love for everybody to just close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Some of you, it's really early in the morning. Maybe you've just woken up. Some of you have been up for a few hours and you've been busy. So take a couple of deep breaths so you can really fully absorb this energy. And when you breathe in, just breathe in love. And when you breathe out, breathe out excess. Just whatever it is you need to let go of. All right, so um, I'm going to jump in, um, and Cynthia, thank you for all of that. Um, the understanding vibration is really why I'm here today, um, because when Cynthia started talking about vibration, I said, you know, I can I can unpack this. Um, I've been studying this a very long time, um, and in the manifesting course that I teach, we talk a lot about David Hawkins' work. So. That's where I wanted to start. Um, he founded the Institute for Spiritual Research. Uh, that's, of course, in Sedona, Arizona, where all of the like epicenter, I feel like, of spirituality is in the United States. Um, and uh, he's a teacher. He's an author. Um, I absolutely love his books. Uh, the Power Versus Force book is actually one of the books that was um, that was written, that was read, that that. Um, to write the Celestine prophecy. So James Redfield, I'm going to circle back to the Celestine prophecy. That's what my manifesting course is based on. But he read like 25 different books to write 
that Celestine prophecy back in the 90s. And power versus force um, was one of them. I think also so was truth versus falsehood. So if you're um, really wanting to deep dive, uh, even the transcending levels of consciousness, uh, he's got like 20 books, but I would start with power versus force. Um, and I'll read a quote from that here at the bottom, but he's the creator of the scale of vibration that we have that globally we've been using for the last, you know, 20 years. So, um, and that came from hundreds of thousands of calibrations of him testing over those 20 years to define what vibration looks like in our body when we are thinking positive or negative thoughts, when we are surrounded with positive or negative environments um, <clears throat> or music um, or emotions. So he says power comes from within and is based on principles such as integrity, courage, and compassion, while force is external and relies on fear, coercion, and manipulation. So think about those two things and how, right, that plays into our business because I'll be talking about that as well. But power versus force um, really is, you know, for me, uh, the, the foundation of where I, um, I start, right? Am I, am I in my own power or am I trying to force my way through this situation? Um, and so understanding that difference, right, can help us make those conscious decisions. So here's the scale. And I absolutely love the beauty of this scale um, and the um, um, the whole the whole chart here. Right. So if you look at the bottom, we have those negative emotions um, and the. Negative emotions of guilt and grief and fear are all, and pride and, and even courage, uh, we start to get into, you know, uh, maybe getting into flow when we hit courage or even neutrality, but anything under that, anything under 200 um, vibrates at a very low energy and very low um, uh, wavelength, right? Cause this is wavelengths. So our energy is contracted versus expanded. And when we're in love, pure love, we're at 500. That's our goal. That should be everybody's goal every day to get into love or above, I say. Um, and um, the general public vibrates around that 250 or lower. And so if you think about like everybody's vibrating lower, and I'll talk about this on the next slide, vibration is matching, then it's it can be hard. It's not always, but it can be if we don't practice raising our vibration and having a system for raising our vibration. Um, and that's what I'm I'm excited to share with you guys today because a lot of you have already developed your own system for raising your vibration. You may not even know it, but um, you have. And, um, and, you know, Tony Robbins calls this getting into state, right? Um, I, I really focus on energy and how it feels in my body. So if, you know, if you think about when you're having a conversation with someone, um, for example, you know, a new partner and they hit that first roadblock of rejection um, and you're asking them, you know, you're they're excited because they're just brand new and they're excited about the product. And, you know, you're talking and the energy is high and you can feel that you can feel their passion and excitement. And then they hit their first no. And you ask them, maybe they don't tell you, you ask them, hey, what's going on? How's your business? And all of a sudden, you know, it's it's either crickets or it's um, really few words in the responses to you. And you're not sure why the, the best next question is what what's going on energetically for you? I've noticed your energy has dropped. Right. And so that's that's a conversation that we have often in our team is I, I notice something's changed. I notice your energy has dropped. Just tell me why. What's the, what's the emotion? What's the negative emotion or the negative track that's coming up in your brain? Is that lust? Is that shame? Is that stress? Is that apathy, right? Those, the, all of those are low vibration energies. So if we can get back into that state of love, that's why we focus on our why, right? Because it brings us back into that state of joy and peace and love and acceptance. Um, it is vi vibration is matching, but it's also exponential. So you look at guilt, 
at 30 or shame at 20. Um, and it, it feels like a long way, especially in grief, feels like a long way to get from grief to peace with whatever that was, whatever has brought you grief. Um, you know, from 75 to 600 is a long way. But once we get past that 250, it, it's really not a long way because it starts to compound. And that compounding is a ripple effect into the rest of the world. So you can ripple your energy out, especially if you're vibrating at 500, to affect up to 750,000 people around you. Then when somebody's vibrating at 700, they can positively impact 70 million people. Why do you think Jesus attracted so many people, right? Buddha, the Dalai Lama, right? They're vibrating at that en enlightenment spectrum and that attracts volumes of people because they want to feel that good too. So um, love or above, I say, here it is in the body. And, um, you know, that, that lower vibration can affect our lower chakras. And if we raise the vibration in our bodies, it can lead to personal transformation. And obviously, if it ripples out the whole society, obviously in our whole team, right, leadership, uh, it can even resolve conflict with minimal effort, that force, that power versus force, right? Are you pushing that noodle up, up the hill, right? Or are you just allowing the good and the positive and the joy and the love to unfold. Um, so I said, vibration is matching as above, so below. So as above is how we feel and how we exhibit ourselves and present ourselves and how our positivity and enlightenment and, and joy can ripple out into our own aura. And so that energy is big and following us around wherever we go. Or if we're contracted, you know, it's our, in our cells, we feel that. That's where anxiety comes from. Anxiety comes from living in that space of fear for too long. That vibration feels like the insides of your body might be breaking apart because your cells have no juice. They have no motion in them because they're not vibrating, right? That's, that's what's important. We are energetic beings. Everything on this planet is energy. So if it's not moving, it can cause disruption within the body. Um, and it can do that in a physical place, an emotional place, a mental place, and a spiritual place. And it's directly connected, connected to our emotional states. So having a champion of our, uh, you know, having that champion mentality of our own emotional state and emotional awareness, intelligence we talk about, is extremely important to the rest of our being. And as you know now, everyone else around you. Um, so I call this high-low awareness. High energy vibrates very high. We see that wave on the right, very high. Low energy vibrates low across the field of that norm, right? And so asking yourself some good questions around and having awareness around, one of my techniques that I teach people is put a reminder in your phone once a day and ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? How's that affecting me? Um, or three times a day, if you're an overachiever. <laughs> so you can have a morning, a midday, and an evening check-in with your emotion and your vibration and your awareness around that. And you can ask yourself, does this thought make me feel high or low? Right? We choose our thoughts. And oftentimes people say, you know, I can't seem to shake this, whatever that negative vibration is, uh, fear or anxiety or shame or grief. And um, you can choose. So you can choose grief or you can choose joy. You can choose fear or you can choose love. So that's my next question. Is this thought love or above? Then ask yourself, what makes my energy drop? This is how we start to find what our daily checklist for raising our vibration is. What makes my energy drop? Maybe who makes my energy drop? What places, what foods, what music? Just be really aware of, you know, the news makes your energy drop. Nobody should be watching that. It's all fabricated anyway. Um, nobody should be eating junk food, right, in this group. So we know what makes our energy drop. Um, 
we're all human. So we live in this wave and it's okay. You know, we're not going to be up high all the time. We're going to have this wave. Energy is a wave. So getting familiar with, oh, what this drop feels like. Okay. I'm going to go outside and take my shoes off and ground, or I'm going to pick up this crystal and take five deep breaths. Something like that as a, on a regular basis. I love having people carry worry stones in their pockets, um, pick an, pick a crystal that's grounding for you and, um, and carry that around. And that can be part of your awareness. If you're feeling your energy drop, pull that out, rub it a few times, say an affirmation, even if it's just love or above, ask yourself a question. Um, and then also notice how long you sit with that energy. Uh, masters of their emotional state don't sit with energy for very long. And they have awareness that when an energy comes in or an emotion comes in or someone else's energy ripples out into my field, instead of casting judgment or blame or um, uh, any kind of negative reaction, right? Walk away and say to yourself, what raises my vibration? And how fast, this is a game that you can play. How fast can I move this energy with the breath, with your thoughts, with doing something different? So begin to generate your own system. And cultivating a higher vibration starts here with practicing gratitude. You can journal that. You can write gratitude on your mirror. I just got these amazing little stickers um, that we can put on our, we're going to put on our cars that say grateful, um, that look like part of the car, um, you know, insignias, right? Um, I put it right under the SE on the right side, the back of my car. Um, and it's cursive. So, you know, uh, there's a whole generation that won't be able to read that. I thought once I put it on there, but uh, whatever, it's for me to remind me when I walk up to the back of my car to load something in to be grateful. So uh, I play with affirmations like that. We have messages in our car, on our mirror, all over the house, little sticky notes in my phone. Um, so practicing gratitude. And the, you'll see on here, the word practice is repeated a lot because we're never just in gratitude. We're human. So you slip in and out of gratitude. You feel confident and not about meditation. Even if you've been meditating like I have for 20 years, uh, I go through phases where I can't actually focus for more than five minutes. Um, and so I do my meditation two or three times a day instead of a 30 minute meditation once a day. And um, meditation isn't about completely emptying your brain like a cup of water, I say. Um, it's like looking up at the sky and watching the clouds pass, seeing the thoughts come by and let, and then letting them go because there's, you know, nothing that we can do about our thoughts. They come in and go. So, um, but we can control the quality of our thoughts because that's the brain. The brain is active and it's got a neuro network we hardly even understand yet. So, um, you know, messages are translated and passing through all the time and that's okay but we can control the, the positivity aspect of them and the vibration of them. Uh, connecting with nature, that one's a no brainer. It releases an endorphins to be out in nature, moving and breathing the oxygen that the plants are providing for us. So get out in nature, practice kindness. This is gonna be your homework, so I'll circle back to this, um, but practicing kindness and compassion are high vibration emotions. Um, so a random act of kindness always raises your mood. Practice breath work in and out. That's the one thing that's stable in our body is our heartbeat and our breath. And we don't even have to do, it's automatic. We don't have to do anything for them. So all we have to do is bring our attention back to them to slow down. Practice forgiveness. That one's a no brainer too. And then of course, living clean, eating a healthy life. I mean, eating a healthy life, living a healthy and clean and healthy eating lifestyle, right? All the things that we preach, um, practicing what we preach sometimes can be hard. Um, cutting out the things that lower our vibration one by one. So I'm just going to highlight this really quick. 
This is the Celestine Prophecy, um, the book by James Redfield. It was released in the early 90s. I read it in 1996, um, and it became my Bible, if you will. Um, I live my life by synchronicity and letting synchronicity, because that's the foundation of this book, letting synchronicity guide me. Um, and we have changed this course name for manifesting with synchronicity because Udemy did not understand what that meant. Uh, we defined it as clearly defined tools for manifesting the life of your dreams. So there are in this course and in this book, nine insights. What I say is for developing a high vibration life. That's what they're for. Um, and so the number one insight for this topic is insight seven. You can screenshot this so you can go back to it, watch the recording. Um, but this is my checklist for engaging the flow that I give all of my students. So some of this isn't going to maybe make sense to you. I'm not going to go through all of it because it would take too long. Um, but um, the highlights are keeping your energy strong, right? When we feel weakness, that's a low vibration. When we feel strength, that's a high vibration. So that's easy right? What gives you strength? Being open, being loving, um, being compassionate. And then I highlighted or bolded some of the words in here. You may or may not be able to see them, but observe beauty. That's what I wanted to pull out of that first section. Sometimes just observing beauty, even if it's in your, you know, the artwork on your mug or uh, the landscape around your home, flowers in a vase. Um, observing beauty is a great place to come back to because that beauty instills in us a word that I use a lot in this course called agape, which you may or may not have heard, but most people have. Um, and agape is that 1000 level vibration. It's love at its purest, wholest, unconditional sense. So observing beauty kicks that into overdrive for us. The second section is ask for answers. So asking questions that you know will solicit an answer easily, not a hard question, an easy question. Like, does this raise my vibration? Not what's the meaning of my vibration being low all of the time, right? That's, that's a hard question. And, um, Dialing it back to what can I, how can I just simplify this and raise my vibration? And the way to do that, I say to everybody is centering yourself on the present moment. Focus right here, right now. That's all we have. We can't change the past. We can't, we can't, you know, completely control the future. And the less details we have for the future and just having a broad brush to paint what we want and the vision of what we want, instead of uh, the specifics and the details and the timeline and the numbers and all of that will come if we hold that moment in ourselves of joy and love and light. Staying alert um, and releasing the need for control is that second one. So I, I think control is highly overrated. Uh, and I have spent the last two years obviously <laughs> practicing that myself and letting go of control of this entire process, which has been uh, enlightening in itself and challenging. Um, but what doesn't make us, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, right? And what doesn't um, affect our energy, we, we don't let it affect our energy if we let go, right? And nothing can disrupt your energy if you're in that state of love and light. And then probe coincidences. This one's all about synchronicity. So when, when coincidences happen, ask, what was that all about? Why was that there? What was that? You know, who is that person? Why have I seen this person three times? Why have I heard this book three times? You know, um, or trusting your gut. Uh, we are so intuitive and we are so disconnected from that. That is our animal instinct and our, our, at our core, our knowledge and our, our deep inner knowing. And this is, this is our galactic inner knowing, um, ancient, ancient inner knowing is embedded in every cell in our body. And all we have to do is turn inward to hear it and trust it. 
I'll talk about faith in a little bit as well. Sending energy to others. This one's harder. Um, this one takes practice. They all take practice, but this one takes a little extra practice. This is a 301 level. Um, we talk about this in insights eight, nine, and through insight 12, uh, insight 11, 12, uh, 10, 11, 12 are in three different books. Insights one through nine are in the Celestine Prophecy. And then there's three follow-up books in that series. And um, and we focus a lot on sending energy in those higher insights because we have to practice on ourselves first. We have to get the pull the reins in on our own um, you know, emotional instability before we can send energy to others. But even if you're in that state of flow or curiosity or gratitude, that's a great time to send energy out into the world. So Faith, um, I wanted to bring up our personal growth book club. If you guys haven't heard of this, our team is doing this. Everybody's welcome. Um, we're doing 12 books in 12 months. And um, we're currently reading Think and Grow Rich, again, because we've all read it. Um, but we wanted to put a couple of books as a repeat in here to remind us it can be simple, as simple as stating something every single day being our battle cry for what we want to envision and create. Um, the website for that, the, the Facebook group for that is um, uh, the link below on the right, um, 2024 Personal Growth Book Club. You can go to Facebook and search that and join us. We meet once a month to go over the book and that's it. You can listen to the book, read the book, or get the cliff notes. Um, but just so long as you're getting some takeaways and showing up and sharing those takeaways to the group. So um, when faith is blended with the vibration of thought, so thought is a vibration, energy is a vibration, right? But thought is something that, again, can move through us or we can guide through us. So the subconscious mind instantly picks that vibration up translate it into the spiritual equivalent and transmit, I love this, transmits it to the infinite intelligence, as in the case of prayer. And when I was talking earlier about the vibration and raising your vibration um, to a certain level, 500 or 700, and affecting hundreds of thousands or even millions of people around you by raising to those two numbers, um, global prayer is a perfect example of proof of that. When we have a global prayer day and everybody focuses on one thing, we feel that ripple out. We feel that change. And so anytime someone says, you know, I'm really disillusioned with what's going on in the world right now, it's really, it's really affecting my energy. I said, we'll get three friends together and pray, pray for something better. And even if you're not, you don't have a, a, a strong, specific religious background, um, it doesn't matter. Prayer is just intention. So focus that intention on what you want to create. And then one of the other books we read at the beginning of the year in February was Positive Intelligence. And Michalina, I saw that you're on today. She did an awesome talk for us a few weeks ago on this. I wanted to pull this out because um, one of the things that the author says is think of the mirror neuron system as your tuning fork of the brain. And if you're vibrating at the frequency of the saboteurs, which are those lower vibration emotions, um, then you're automatically going to trigger that saboteur in the person that you're interacting with because vibration is matching, right? It's a frequency. And one of the things I like to, to, uh, to liken vibration to is the radio. We can tune and we don't even use the radio anymore, probably, but we know what it what it is and we can tune the radio because we all still have it in our car. At some point we won't. Um, and that's, you know, just the future coming. Um, but we can tune the radio to different channels, just like you can tune, um, you know, your television to different channels. And, um, you know, all of the apps, right, are different channels, right? So you can tune your your brain, your emotional system, your energy to just a different channel. You walk into a bar and everybody's drinking and it's, you know, a CD bar and you're like, oh God, I need to walk right back out of this bar. Even though, you know, you have to meet a friend there. It's like, can we go sit outside by the river, right? There's a bar, a specific bar that those of you who know Steamboat Springs, there's one that I always talk about when I taught these classes locally. Um, because it was actually on one of our energy vortexes and it was dark. I mean, you walked in there in, at night and it was, nobody wanted to be in there unless they were 
you know, drinking their sorrows away, right? Because that energy of the 40 or 100 people that are in there hits your energy like a ton of bricks. You don't want to be in there anymore, right? You, If you're in tune with your energy, you want to walk out, right? So that's when I walk out and I do one of my short meditations on the heart space or prana breath, or if I've got a crystal in my pocket, you know, rub that crystal um, and uh, focus on love or above. So um, in closing, when you search, I did Google raising your vibration on the side there, right? Just go Google raising your vibration and you get all these little, uh, if you click on images, you get all these little memes for uh, raising your vibration. And so here are some other great ideas. We know that, um, you know, walking in nature, I've already talked about, um, bringing in fresh flowers, um, you know, um, being conscious of the foods you eat. Uh, Andrea, would you mind muting? Thank you. Um, and getting your blood pumping and doing yoga, um, all of these things will raise your vibration. Repeating positive affirmations raises your vibration. Play, lighting candles, right? So take a screenshot or go Google raising your vibration to get some fun ideas. And then at the top right, I put my high vibration teachers over the years. So Wayne Dyer, um, he's one that I love to quote all the time. He says, getting in the gap between thoughts is where the juice is. And um, that's where we can focus on raising our vibration is between the thoughts, right? Um, of course, Dalai Lama, some of you guys know all of these names probably, but maybe you don't know Joe Dispenza or Tom Kenyon. Tom Kenyon does sound healing. Um, I've done an amazing workshop with him uh, out in Orcas Island. Mike Dooley as well. Uh, he's someone that I follow. I'm actually in his inner circle right now because I just felt like I needed someone to remind me uh, the things that I know, but I don't always practice, right? So we may know these things, but we're human. And we need to practice. Um, so your homework today is the random act of kindness. And I want it to be anonymous. So, you know, you could big tip your waitress, but she's going to know it was from you, right? Um, I love the the going through the coffee line and, and buying the coffee for the person behind me. You know, it can only happen where their order is already placed, right? Um, so Starbucks even though, you know, not maybe not necessarily a high vibration uh, environment for some of you. Um, if you have a positive experience or another positive, another um, coffee shop that brings you a more positive experience, then, then buy the coffee for the person behind you, right? Or um, uh, another, another one that I love um, is just leaving random flowers on somebody's doorstep. I don't even know. Like collecting flowers from the roadside and walking up and putting them on somebody's doorstep. Right. Um, I haven't done that one in a really long time, but I used to do that one a lot, um, especially walking around downtown in Steamboat. So um, practice rans random acts of kindness and um, let's put them somewhere. I don't I don't think Cynthia probably wants us to clutter the chat in the Voxer with that, but I would love to see images of that. Um, and so maybe we can because we always upload this to YouTube. Maybe we can call I'll comment below this YouTube of what our random act of kindness was. Um, so. Uh, with that, we are complete today, everybody. Thank you for listening. Do your homework. Um, don't beat yourself up because that's a low vibration. Just reset anytime you feel yourself drop and ask, what raises my vibration today? Thanks for having me, Cynthia. Oh, Andy, that was amazing. I think everyone should just right now unmute because this, this has so inspired me. And I'm just going to sit in the pink beach and re-listen over and over again. I took some screenshots, but I'm exactly. going to really meditate on everything you said and to just put it into action. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.